In 2018, I watched the release of movies like Crazy Rich Asians and To All the Boys I've Loved Before gain international fame as necessary steps to a more diverse film industry. The success of these movies got me thinking about the role Asian actors have played in American film. And that led me to Anna Mae Wong. Anna Mae Wong is considered one of the first Asian American Hollywood stars, rising to fame in the 20s and 30s. I decided to take a walk in Anna's shoes this week, and by shoes, I mean makeup. But knowing little about how makeup was worn in the 20s and 30s, and even less about Anna's unique style, I decided to reach out to an expert. Gabriela Hernandez, founder of Best of Make Cosmetics and makeup historian. So how would you describe Anna Mae Wong's makeup and her overall aesthetic? She was inspired by the flappers. She was kind of an avant-garde, very stylized type of looks as far as how she did her hair, the really, really thin brows and the really bold lips to even perpetuate her role as like the dragon lady. How would you describe the most prominent makeup trends from the 1920s? So the, the brows definitely were one of the statements of that period. Then you had uh, bold lips. It was intentionally meant to make your lips look puckered and smaller. She did the same thing, but it was drawn so that it was a little bit harsher. She was trying to be more exotic. The use of like a thin liner like that didn't really come into fashion the 50s. Her look was bold. Some women started to want to be independent and actually not be beholden to a man. There was the flappers, so the women that wanted to express themselves in a different way and wanted to be more independent. You had prohibition, so you had hidden speakeasies where people could go for entertainment. You would have the smoky eyes and the look that Anime Wong was wearing was more of a character. She managed actually to get some roles where she was the main star. And that was quite an achievement during that time. When it comes to makeup, Anime Wong was clearly ahead of her time. But after learning about her use of style and beauty to amplify her roles, I wondered how this second generation Chinese American navigated the film industry back in the early 1900s. I met with Graham Hodges, professor of history at Colgate University and author of Anna Mae Wong, From Laundryman's Daughter to Hollywood Legend. Anna Mae Wong is an important cultural figure because she's probably the most famous Asian American woman of the 20th century. She also crystallizes what an actress of Asian descent does in Hollywood. The roles that she has to take, the difficulty she has with scripts, with directors, but at the same time, the stick to to manage a career that lasts for four decades in over 55 movies. Her first big role is called Toll of the Sea. People are just amazed by her ability to cry on cue, by the costumes she wears, by the hairstyles. The problem for Anna Mae is that she's Chinese American during the era of Chinese exclusion. This goes from 1882 until 1943, in which there are heavy bans on particularly Chinese women coming into the country. That ban then translates into a lot of social discrimination. She cannot have a relationship with a white man on the screen. She can't kiss the guy. She can't be the happy ending of a romantic film. Something has to happen to her. Usually she has to go through some kind of torture. She always dies at the end. Breaking point for her is the production of the most famous novel ever done by an American about the Chinese, and this is Good Earth. It's Pearl Buck's Nobel Prize winning novel. Pearl Buck declares it should be made with Chinese actors. This would be a huge innovation. All of her backers are saying it must be Anna Mae uh, as Olan, who is the, the good wife. It goes to Luz Rayner, who'd won the Oscar. So after that, she takes a famous trip to China. She'd never been there before. And so she spends about seven months in China uh, learning about Chinese theater, film. And when she goes back, she says, I'm only going to do movies that are positive about China. American attitudes about China are changing at this point. Producers are more willing to give her uh, positive roles. The kind of issues that she faced in the 1920s, Asian American actors are still struggling with today. Anime Wong can inspire Asian Americans through her perseverance, uh, her dedication, her refusal to be rejected, and her success. It's clear Anna Mae Wong jumped through hoops for her career. Armed with my newfound knowledge of Anna, it was time to tackle her makeup routine. 
The first thing I tackled were Anna's iconic 20 cell brows, so I decided to cover them using Elmer's glue, powder, and foundation, a technique used by many drag artists today. This was my first time attempting to do this, and I'm not gonna lie, I overestimated my abilities. This was a hard task, but after many, many rounds of glue, copious amounts of powder and foundation, I finally got them to a place I was happy with. According to Gabriella, most women in the 20s would have shied away from face makeup, opting instead for just a layer of powder. Since I covered my brows though, I did apply some of the same foundation to the rest of my face to even things out. Once my foundation was blended, I went in with some Ben Nye contour cream. And they did contour during that time to make sure that the angles were seen from, from the cameras because the lighting in the film weren't as good as at capturing lights and shadows. So a lot of times they had to paint them in so that you would see shadows on the face when they were filming like black and white uh, mm -hmm. movies. Then I followed up with a heavy dose of Ben Nye's color cake makeup to even out my complexion and create a porcelain-like finish. Then came the tricky part, drawing on my fake eyebrows. This is what we're working with, and this is what we're trying to achieve. You know, she started out in silent film, and in those films you needed to be able to portray expression without actually having people hear what you were saying. So the eyebrows were part of your acting. Eyebrows are on. That was so Hard. I don't think I did a great job, but it was my first time. In the 20s, most women wore smoky eyes, but Anna Mae Wong opted for a cat eye shape. She was pushing the shape of her own eyes and making them even more elongated and almond shaped so that it was very exotic and it, it kind of helped her image on screen as, as being this character. She also smudged liner onto her bottom lash line to give her eyes a more sultry effect. All right, I'm gonna start to bring the color into my inner corner. She has extremely long bottom lashes and we got a pair of bottom lash falsies from a brand called House of Lashes and I'm gonna put a little bit of lashes on my top lash line as well. False lashes were very, very common as far as uh, theatrical use and, and movies because they would photograph better. Once my eyeliner was done, I applied a layer of cake mascara. After wetting the cake with water, I used a small brush to sweep the product onto my eyelashes. To finish off the face, I followed up with some liquid blush in a rosy red shade and moved on to lipstick. So I'm gonna put the lipstick on now, and this is NARS Ingrid, which is a very, very deep kind of aubergine berry shade. She had the, the bold lip, and depending on the type of filming that she was doing, if she was doing a black and white or a Technicolor production, it was either a red shade or probably a very darker shade for black and white. I'll be honest, when I look back on anime's filmography, many of her roles make me cringe. She was a concubine, a slave, a dragon lady meant to instill fear in the audience. But taking a step back, I realize that she represents so much more. Anime Wong made a space for herself in an industry that was stacked against her. This is something that actors of color still face to this day. If you ask me, Anime Wong was the ultimate hustler. A woman who leaned into her Chinese heritage through her makeup and styling choices to take advantage of an extremely slanted system. She's very inspiring, I think, to people who look at her and say, this is somebody who really worked against ferocious odds. And as bad as racism is now, 
It was much, much worse in the 1920s. And yet she actually was able to be a successful person that we can look at, admire, and enjoy today. Thanks so much for watching, guys. Click here to subscribe to Refinery 29 and click here to watch another video. See you next time.